morning, can you say um, a morning that's filled with God's presence? I want to just declare um, today to be a day of blessing and power. Um, the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I want to just call this day that God has made, um, give it a very purposeful intention and direction. Say great day, great day. This is a great day. This is a beautiful day. This is an amazing day. This is a day of power. Say this is a day where God, 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 full glory will be displayed in my life. Come on, go ahead and just declare this is an amazing day. It's not too early to give your day an assignment. Say greatness today. <laughs> Say power today. Joy, joyful morning. Hallelujah. It's a joyful day. Hallelujah. It's a day that is filled with testimonies of God's goodness. You're most welcome today to this amazing day of God's grace. God's power, God's love, God's goodness. You will see him manifest to you on every side and your, your, your heart will be filled with the amazing, amazing, amazing dimensions of God's love. You're so welcome to this Ignite platform today. Um, this is the prayer hour of the Elevation Church. And we gather like this every morning from Monday to Friday just to pray together, to share stories of God's goodness, you know, and just to encourage ourselves in our spiritual disciplines, searching through the word, praying together, you know, and just celebrating what God is doing. Um, as we start off at Ignite this morning, I want you to know that God is set to meet with you. I want you to put away every distraction that may come at you today. I need you to know that God wants to reach out to you today. And um, I encourage that you pay attention. I encourage that you follow through. If you hear a scripture, you know, that just blesses your heart this morning. Just take it down, write it down and continue to meditate on it in the course of the day. Right. Because God wants to talk to you. God wants to reach out to you. And God wants to frame your world, build your world out of his word. Amen and amen. So you're welcome once again. Welcome once again. If you're joining us um, in the Zoom room, you're most welcome. Glad to have you here. If you're joining on YouTube, again, you're most welcome. A shout out again to people joining on, to anyone joining us on MixLR, you're most welcome this morning. And I know that God will meet you at the very point of your need. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Um, we start out in worship, thanksgiving and prayer this morning. And I'd just like you to just lift up your voice and thank him. You know, we're going to sing some songs together, maybe one or two. But before I give you a song, I want you to find your own song. I, I want you to find your own song this morning and lift your own song to God. I don't know what, I don't know what has been the most prevailing thought on your mind. Maybe it's wondering how will this year pan out or how is 2023 going to shut shape up? I need you to know that you got, the God you serve is not only God for 2022, he's the God of 2023 and he has gone ahead of you already making crooked paths straight. So please lift up your voice and just thank him. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his greatness. Thank him for what looks like the little things. Thank him for what looks like the big things. Thank him for everything that you have seen him do in your life. I want you to just bless the name of the Lord and exalt him today. Lord, we just praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. <laughs> Lord, we praise you today and we exalt you. We say, Father, that you are worthy to receive our praise. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. Lord, we bless you today. We give you our praise. We give you our worship. We honor you. Someone just, you know, just think back on the last week and how much pressure there might have been on you, you know, pressure on your mind, pressure on your spirit, pressure on your body. Maybe just trying to figure out, you know, how you are going to look after your family, look after your parents, sort out a child or a sibling. I want you to put all of those distractions aside, things trying to bombard your 
mind today and just focus your attention on God. Huh? It was David that said, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In that song, he was in, in that sound, he was asking for help. But at the same time, he was acknowledging that there is a rock that is higher than me. There is a power that is higher than any other power that I may have record, that I may have found. You know, there is a there is a source of help that is guaranteed to bring me out. So maybe you're in that place today and you're and you're trusting God this morning for strength, for power, for relief, for release. I want you to lift up your eyes to the hills. Ah, from whence cometh my help? The sound asks. My help comes from the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. I want you to lift your eyes to him this morning and say, Lord, you are God, you are God, you are God. And my heart safely trusts in you. My heart safely trusts in the God of all gods the king over every king, the Lord and the maker of my soul. Lord, we bless you today. Lord, we praise you today. We give you honor. We give you praise. We lift up our worship to you today. You are God. You are God. You are God. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God. Can we just sing that again to him? Sing amazing God, amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God. One more time. Sing amazing. Amazing God. It's so simple. Sing amazing God. You do mind blowing things. You're the amazing God. You do mind blowing things amazing god you come through for me it's so simple sing you come through you come through for me you do my Blowing things, amazing God, you do mind blowing things, amazing God, and you do mind blowing things, yes, you do, amazing God. You do mind blowing things, amazing God, and you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, almighty God, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Can you sing it to him today? You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. So worthy, Jehovah. You are worthy to be glorified. 
You are worthy, almighty oh, God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Yes, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, almighty oh, God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord, and you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh, mighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we exalt you today. We give you the honor and the praise that is due to you. Lord, these voices, these arms of flesh are lifted up to you today to say, hallowed be your name. Father, we ask, Lord, that this gathering today, Lord, will be unto you and no one else. We commit ourselves, Father, Lord, to follow you today, to hear you today, to receive divine instruction from you today. And I ask, Father, that for everyone, Lord, who is stretching out in faith, who is reaching out this beautiful day, Father, seeking, Lord, to find you, to find your will, to find your heart, to find your purpose, mighty God, you will meet them at the very point of our need, oh God. You will meet each and every person at the very point of our need. Father, as we share fellowship together today, we invite you afresh. We receive you afresh. We say, God of the universe, you are welcome in this place. This gathering is for you. It's for you, Father. We've gathered together like this to bless you, to exalt you, and to lift you. We ask, oh God, that you will be exalted and you will be lifted high in this place. That as we seek you, oh God, we will find you. Lord, you will, we will find you, oh God, and we will find your goodwill. We bless you and we exalt you, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name we pray, amen. And someone say a, a resounding amen, amen. Welcome once again. If you're just joining, you're most welcome here. I know that God is set to bless you. God is, so God is set to ignite your heart and set you on a path of goodness, of testimonies in Jesus' matchless name. This week, the theme of our prayers is divine direction, divine direction. I'm just going to share for a little bit on the theme divine direction, and we will continue in our prayers. Just before I do share, I want to encourage someone who has a testimony. You have some testimonies about God's goodness, about God's faithfulness. Will you please go ahead and share it with us this morning? Please type out your testimony and put it in the comment section in the Q&A. You can put it in the chat room of whatever platform you are joining us from. I will check out YouTube, um, MixLR. I will try, I'll do my best to check MixLR. But please share your testimonies with us here on Zoom. Share your testimony. Someone needs to hear about what God has done in your life. And you yourself need to be bold to declare the goodness and the faithfulness of God. So please go ahead and share your testimonies. Please go ahead at any point in the gathering, you know that you just go ahead and share your testimony and I will share it with the people of God this morning. Um, and I know someone will be richly blessed. Amen and amen. All right, so divine direction is our theme. Um, this week, divine clarity, divine instruction, and direction from God. Um, this morning, I need you to know that God is a God who delights in leading us in the way that we should go. Amen. I'll say that again. Our God delights in leading us in the way that we should go. God does not get the glory, you know, from seeing us walk in darkness. God is not, you know, God is not delighted, you know, when we are stuck in ignorance or when we, we, we you know, we, we stay in a place of confusion. Rather, he says he loves to lead us in the way that we ought to go. So just in case there is a particular matter 
that has been bugging your mind and you've been asking, Father, I just want to know what your will is. I just want to have clarity about this matter. I need you to know that as we pray in this season, as we seek God for light, as we ask God to make the path clear ahead of us, of us I want you to have the expectation that God will show you the path that you should take. God will give you wisdom. God will show you how to navigate that tricky situation in your life and you will not walk in darkness in Jesus mighty name. Now an anchor scripture for the prayers in this week is Isaiah 48. The book of Isaiah chapter 48, I will read from verse 17 to verse 18. Thus says the Lord, your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. All that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. I'm going to read it one more time, just for the benefit of the people at the back, right? Isaiah 48, verse 17 and 18. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God. He is the Lord, your God. He teaches you to profit and he leads you by the way that you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, he says, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. The first thing I want to say to us this morning is that God delights in leading us by the way that we ought to go. The Lord that we serve is a God who likes to lead us and show us the path of life. God is not glorified when you and I live in darkness, or when we are often confused about the issues, he wants us to find direction and find clarity. And he wants to show us the instructions we need for life. Amen. I want you to note that today. Note that God wants to give you clarity and God wants to give you direction. The second point I want to make today is that God you know, God, um, God gets glory, right? When you walk in divine instruction and divine direction, hallelujah. God gets glory. God is glorified when you and I listen to his instruction and follow through, follow diligently when he leads us, when he guides us, when he shows us the path to take, amen. And then the third point I want to make today, the third and last point I want to make today is that regardless of where you are on the path of destiny, regardless of where exactly you are right now on the path of destiny, God can still give you a word that will lead you, that will direct you and will connect you with what he is saying and what he is doing. And as I was meditating on this particular point and just asking myself today, um, how can I buttress this point for the people of God um, today on this Ignite call? And then I remembered the story of a particular man in scripture. The Bible didn't tell us his name. So we don't really know what his name is, but the Bible tells us that he was an Ethiopian, right? He was an Ethiopian eunuch and we find his story in acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 from verse 26 the bible says that the man philip philip was a deacon in the you know in the early church if you recall if you recall the book of acts um the um, people like philip you know were separated unto god so that the apostles could focus on prayer and on the word and um deacons like Philip, who were called to help serve tables, you know, were then helping to distribute things to the widows and all of that. So this is Philip, right? I just need you to know this morning that this is Philip. This is not Peter, Apostle Peter. This is not Apostle, you know, John. These are not the people that we think were the juggernauts of the early church. This was a deacon. His work was serving food. He was, his job was serving food. 
among the people of God. So it tells me that you and I have access to this same kind of leading and direction by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Verse 26 says, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And this is, this is a very strong point. It says, this is desert. Now, you and I can attest to the, fact, to the fact that there are times that God leads us or God gives us an instruction that right at that moment may not really seem to make sense. Why are you leading me into the desert? When people are in the cities, when people are in the metropolis, but God knew what he was doing and God wanted to lead Philip on a very, very important assignment. So Philip arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians who had charge of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now this Ethiopian eunuch was returning and while he was sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Now, if you read, I want, I want to encourage that you read the rest of that scripture all the way to the end. But in this scripture, the Bible describes this man, this Ethiopian, who had come to Jerusalem to worship. We don't know who told him that he could come to Jerusalem to worship. We don't even know where he first encountered the God of the Israelites, but we know that he had come to Jerusalem to worship. He thought it was that important to leave Ethiopia and come and worship this God who is in Jerusalem. And the God who heard him honored that action, honored his faith, and sent Philip from where he was to go and meet him in the desert. The point I want to make for someone this morning is that God knows how to get his instructions to you. And as long as you're in a place where you're saying, God, help me, God, help me. God, show me what the next step to take. Show me how to navigate. God is able to get his instruction to you. I want you to take note of the fact that, that, that two people enjoyed divine leading in that scripture. First was Philip, because God used Philip as a messenger to go and help this Ethiopian eunuch understand him better, know him more and receive an instruction that would bless him as he was going back to Ethiopia. So Philip enjoyed divine direction in that scripture. But think about the Ethiopian eunuch as well, who had come on this long journey of seeking God, who was going back almost without encountering this God that he had come to seek. And God was like, no way, this man, I must make sure, I must make sure that I get my word to you because this is a new dispensation. This is the dispensation where Jesus is saving men from their sins. And I refuse to let this man go back home the way he came. As the man was sitting down reading through the prophet Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, God sent Philip from a far place to come and meet him on the road, to come and interrupt him on the journey, to join him in that chariot. And if you're a good student of the Bible, if you've read Acts chapter eight through to the end, you know that by the time this man was through with his encounter with Philip, he was born again. He was baptized in water and he went home filled, filled <laughs> to the brim with, with, you know, with, you can just imagine how he went home that this God, this God thought so much about me that he sent someone to come and interrupt me on my journey, to give me an instruction, to tell me what to do with this scripture and to help me connect with him. I need you to know that what God did for this Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter eight, he's doing for you and I every day. When we access platforms like this to share and encourage each other in the word, as we go out and as we study our scripture, the Holy Spirit is, is, is expanding God's word in our hearts and showing us, giving us instructions in righteousness, refusing to let us walk in darkness and giving us the necessary next steps for our lives. Would you just give honor and praise to this God, this amazing God who leads us in the way that we should go, who finds a way to get clarity and instruction to us. 
Hallelujah. Can we just lift up our voices and say, Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, mighty God, because you delight in giving us clarity. You delight in connecting us with your perfect plan and your perfect will. We thank you, Father, Lord, this morning for clarity. We thank you for instructions in righteousness. Thank you, Father, Lord, for showing us the way to go. You do not delight in us walking around in darkness, but you show us, oh, Father, Lord, what to do, where to go, how to speak, and we give you the honor and we give you the praise. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you today for divine instruction. Thank you for clarity. Thank you for the next steps to take. Father, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Now, this is what I want to ask. Is there one or two or three areas of your life today where you are trusting God for clarity? I want you to be very specific this morning. Perhaps as you come to the end of 2022, you're trying to write out your goals for 2023 and you're asking, Father, lead me. I don't want to just write what I want to write. I want to write what is in your heart for me. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, Lord, this morning I received divine instruction. But I want you to make it very specific. If you're trusting God per pertaining to a marital issue, I want you to be very specific and say, Lord, shine your light on these issues of my life. If you're trusting God this morning concerning a work-related matter, can you lift up your voice and say, Father, Lord, fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Show me, give me clarity, Lord. Give me precision concerning this matter. I don't want to walk in darkness. Can you lift up your voice and pray? I'm just going to give you some time to just focus in on that area, that particular area of life that you are trusting God for clarity. For this Ethiopian eunuch, nothing was more important than gaining understanding of this um, scripture that he was reading. For you, it may be something similar. Maybe you're asking God for clarity concerning, you know, your ministry, your own personal ministry and your walk with him. Can you lift up your voice today and just say, Father, Lord, show me the way that I should go. Order my steps in your word. That's the prayer point today. Order my steps in your word. Can you lift up your voice and pray? Lord, order my steps in your word. I don't want to dash my foot against a stone. I don't want to waste my time on things that are not answers. When I have the source of all wisdom, I have access to the source of all wisdom. Father, lead me and guide me. Maybe someone you've been trying to work out a particular relationship. And every time you think you are doing right, you're giving your all, it just does not pan out the way you expect. Can you say, Father, give me clarity concerning this relationship. Give me clarity concerning this friend. If the time for this, if the season of this relationship is over, Father Lord, help me to know it so I'm not wasting my time, so I can focus on the next thing that you want to do in my life. Can you lift up your voice and pray? Lord, order my steps in your word. The psalmist prayed that prayer. Order my steps, Lord. Order my steps. Lord, order my steps. Praye shete kere ba sambri atata. Nem braya shete kere bo siye tere ba shandara ba kaliye tete bosha. Lord, order my steps in your word. Rabat yere borobosh tiana ma kaliye tere borobosh tiana ma kaliye tete. Robo siye tere ba shata kaba. Psalm 119 and verse 133. The psalm is at. Lord, order my steps in your word and do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. Lord, order my steps. Order my steps in your word. You know, there are testimonies in my life of things that God has done, right? Amazing things that God has done that were so powerful and so amazing. And the catalyst was simply hearing an instruction and obeying. Listen to me, listen to me, listen very carefully. Divine direction can save you years of toil and turmoil. There is something about hearing the right instruction at the right time that leads to the promotions that we pray for, that leads to the lifting that we pray for. So when I say today, ask, Lord, order my steps in your word. What you are really asking is, Father, 
I don't want to waste my time on things that do not profit. I don't want to waste my time on things that may sound profitable, but are not your will and your plan for me right now. I want to be precise concerning what you are saying to me now, and I want to walk in it. Can you lift up your voice and make that your prayer? Lord, order my steps in your word. Order my steps. Someone is saying, Father, I don't want to dash my foot against a stone. I made so many mistakes in the past season because I couldn't hear clearly. Lord, now I want you to lead me and guide me. Give me divine direction. Give me clarity about the next steps of my life. I want to know that this is the way I ought to go. I want to walk in your perfect plan. Order my steps, O oh God. Show me the way that I should go. Lead me and guide me. There's a way that a woman can walk, a man can walk. And it will seem like you're a magician. It just seems like little effort is bringing much profit. It's not magic. It's walking in divine alignment. It's walking in the perfect will of God. It is following precisely Rabatata, what God is saying. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to lift up your voice again and say, Father Lord. Lord, I don't want to walk in confusion. I don't want to walk in confusion. I don't want a 40 day journey to last me 40 years. Order my steps in your word. Can you lift up your voice? And maybe there's someone, as I said that prayer right now, Lord, I don't want to spend 40 years on a 40-day journey. You, someone came to your mind, someone that you know that seems to be walking around in darkness, that seems not to be able to find their way. Oh, can you lift up your voice and intercede for that person in this season? Say, Father, concerning so-and-so, concerning my cousin, concerning my brother, concerning my parent, concerning my child, Lord, don't let them spend 40 years on a 40-day journey. Order their steps in your word. Concerning marriage, oh God, we don't want to spend 40 years on a 40 day journey. Concerning career and business, we don't want to spend 40 years on a 40 day journey. Order our steps, oh God. Order our steps. In the name of Jesus. You are the God who leads us in the way that we ought to go. And we ask this morning for clarity, for clarity. Ah, when Pharaoh summoned Joseph and said, look, I have this dream and I need you to interpret it for me. And Joseph was able to give Pharaoh clear instructions on what to do. He said, do it like, this is what the dream means. The seven lean, the seven fat, this is what it means. And in fact, not just am I giving you your dream, I will give you more than that, the interpretation of that dream. This is what you ought to do so that you know, this instruction will not be wasted. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, I want precision in this season, that every instruction you give me will not be wasted. Joseph was able to give Pharaoh precise instructions. This is what Egypt ought to do. This is how to make sure that the the drought ahead will not drown you. This is how to make sure that at the end of the drought season, you are wealthier than when you started. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a place that you are wealthier at the end of a drought season than when the drought started? It's the power of a divine instruction. That's the power of a divine instruction. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, I receive that instruction huh? that puts me ahead, that launches me into purpose and destiny. The wisdom of deep things, oh God, huh? that causes me to handle the wealth of nations. When the Bible says that the wealth of nations will come to you, ah, it will largely come by divine instruction. The Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you in the way that you ought to go.
Can you lift up your voice and say, Father Lord, I receive, I receive divine instructions, huh? spiritual intelligence in this season that puts me ahead of the, of, of the new season I'm stepping into. Someone wants to begin to prophesy over 2023. There's an instruction you can give me today, right now, right now, right now, that will cause the forces of 2023 to be subject to me. Can you lift up your voice and say, Lord, give me spiritual intelligence concerning the seasons we're going into. I want to walk in clarity. I want to walk in divine instruction. I don't want to walk in darkness. Can you lift your voice and declare? There's an instruction that God can give you that wherever you are today, however beautiful and blessed it may be, when you, as a result of that instruction and as a result of carrying out that instruction, you will come to a place where you feel like you have entered into a prime minister position and you are coming from a dungeon. Ah, there's an instruction that can turn your dungeon into a prime minister seat. There's an instruction that can elevate you, so elevate you out of the prison. That you sit with kings and policy makers. Can you lift up your voice and declare, Lord, I receive such an instruction. I receive such an instruction. The forces of life that were operating in the young man called Joseph, it meant he could not stay in that dungeon. For someone, the place where you are right now has become too small. And God wants to bring you out of that place by reason of divine instruction. He wants to bring you out of that place by reason of an instruction in righteousness. Can you say, Father, Lord, Order my steps in your word. Show me what next steps I will take. I want to come unstuck. Someone that is your prayer point. I want to come unstuck. I feel stuck in a certain place. But Lord, I know that there is more for me. Can you ask, Lord, give me a divine instruction, clarity for the season that I'm in. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we receive instructions in righteousness, instructions that lead her, instructions that 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 disgrace confusion. We receive it, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Now I want someone to lift up their voices and ask God for light. Father, Lord, I want, that, I want that to be your prayer point. Lord, I receive light. The Bible says that the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend. I want someone to lift up their voices right now and say, Father, Lord, I receive light. There's something about light that comes and it, it confuses the confusion. It disgraces the darkness and it gives you clarity on what you ought to do. First John chapter one verse 5 to 7. I'm going to read that very quickly and we're going to pray. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I need you to lift up your voice today and ask God for light. Ask him for light. I want you to make that your prayer point right now. Father, Lord, I want your light. I'm asking today for your light. Lord, I receive the light of your, of, of your counsel. I receive light to every place that looks like darkness in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voice and pray? Father, Lord, today we receive light. Someone is asking today for light, light and illumination for everything that feels like darkness around them. Today, oh God, we ask you light our paths. 
lead us in the way that we ought to go. Give us the light of life. We don't want to walk in darkness. We don't want to walk in confusion. We don't want to walk, oh God, as though we do not have a leader and a shepherd over our soul. Lord, we ask you today for light. We ask you today for light to everyone who dwells in darkness. Today, Father Lord, we receive your light. Lord, we receive light. Illumination for every darkness in the name of Jesus. For that person who feels like, look, I've stayed too long in this dark place. I've stayed too long in this place where, in this place that is confused and, 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 and I don't know which way to turn. So God, I ask you for light. Give me light. Let light dwell, dwell in, let, let your light shine on my mind. And just for a moment, in a flash, I, I, I see someone that you, you just feel so burdened in your mind. Like, 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 there's, like there's just so much, there's also so much heaviness on your mind. You can't even think because the, the burdens that you carry just, they, they feel like they want to drown you in that place of heaviness. God has light for that darkness. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, I receive light. Uh, if I'm speaking about you this today, can you put your hands on your head? Just for a moment, put your hands on your head and say, Father, I receive light. Father, I receive light. Your light dispels every confusion. Lord, your light, I receive your light. It, it dispels every heaviness. Rabia teleka shatakaba. Inability to think. Inability to process. Because it just feels like it's too much. Like there's too much coming at you at the same time. Can you just receive light? Father, Lord, we receive light. Father, Lord, we receive light. For that son, for that daughter of your kingdom. Lord, today we receive light. Lord, we receive light. Spirit of the living God, we receive light. For that person who feels like the darkness, the darkness is overwhelming in your mind. We receive light. We receive light. Spirit of the living God, we give you permission to dispel that confusion that the light of your word begins to shine upon that heart in the name of Jesus and every confusion is turned around every place of confusion is turned around and this will be a token for you that, that, that the miracle has happened peace, the peace of God, peace like a river, peace like a river, let it wash over your son and your daughter, peace like a river, peace like a river, we speak it over you today, in the name of Jesus, everything that has stolen your peace hitherto, we hold it bound today in the name of Jesus, Every confusion that is meant to cause you to make costly mistakes. I hear that in my spirit. Costly mistakes. Every confusion that has been sponsored by the enemy to make you make costly mistakes. This morning, the blood of Jesus is against you. We declare today that every confusion ceases in the name of Jesus. The light of God shines upon your heart and upon your mind. You are released into rest. You are released into a place of rest. Ah, that rest that is promised to the people of God, we receive it for you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for clarity. Thank you for instruction. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we just go ahead for a moment and just sow a seed of prayer for the church of the living God? And this is the prayer point I want us to lift. I want us to pray for everyone who is, who is serving God right now in a place where 
it is dangerous to serve God. You know, when we lifted prayers like this, prayer points like this in the past, we thought we were only talking about sub-Saharan Africa, you know, and the Middle East and some of those countries where Christians were actively persecuted. But in the season and the times when we're in right now, it's so easy for the world's agenda to cancel anyone who is lifting up the name of Jesus and promoting godly values and godly principles. Can we lift up our voice right now and, and just pray for everyone and anyone, everyone and anyone who is lifting up the name of Jesus and shining his light in this generation where it is no longer cool and fashionable in quotes to lift up the name of Jesus and then people there are people who are just bold about their faith and, and are persecuted right now. And it's happening everywhere in the world, everywhere where, 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 where it has no, where, where the agenda of the enemy is to make timeless principles look like nothing. Can we lift up our voice today and just say, Father, Lord, your promise is that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. We sow the seed of prayer today for your church. You said, I will build my church. And so we declare over the church of the living God, where on every continent, in every country, we're speaking, Father, today for, for, for every single person, oh God, in every single continent of the world who is struggling right now to 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 carry the name of Jesus in a generation where it is difficult. We ask, Father Lord, that you will give them strength and might from within. In the name of Jesus, you will send them strength and comfort in this season. And give them grace, oh God, to stand boldly for the name of Jesus. We pray for the church of the living God. And we declare, Lord, you will build your church. You will build your church. The gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail. Every godless agenda, every agenda designed to frustrate the move of the church. Today, oh God, we sow the seed of prayer and we declare over the church of the living God. So mightily will grow the word until it prevails. The word of God will prevail. In this generation, we declare. In Nigeria, the word of God will prevail. In Africa, the word of God will prevail. In North America, the word of God will prevail. In South America, the word of God will prevail. In Europe, the word of God will prevail. In Australia, the word of God will prevail. In Asia, we declare the word of God will prevail. Lord, we speak it over every continent and over the nations of the world. So mightily grows the word and it prevails. Your word prevails. Your word prevails. We speak it by faith today and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, mighty God, because we see a revival, oh God, and we thank you for it accordingly. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Can I also just ask you to pray for your family? I really want you to pray for your family today. And I don't know if you come from a family that is um, saved right now, or you're still believing God for the salvation of members of your family. I just want us to sow this seed of prayer for our families and just declare over them, just declare over our families that the Lord our God, the light of the glorious gospel dawns upon our families, that we permit no one in our families to be lost. We permit no one in our families to dash their foot against a stone. Father, this morning we lift up the families of the Elevation Church and for everyone who is joining us, Lord, we lift up our families as a collective today. We pray over our families. We ask Jehovah that the light of your glorious gospel will, will dawn upon the hearts, oh Father, of our families. Lord, this morning we ask that you will save our families father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, cousin, auntie, uncle. Today, Lord, we bring them into your presence and we ask, Lord, that your hand will be upon them, that your word, oh Lord, your word will dawn upon their hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. We bless you and we thank you. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now it's testimony time. You can see that my smile has perked up. It's testimony time. I'm going to share, you know, some, some of us 
have shared our testimonies in the chat rooms, in the comment section. I'm just going to share um, and amplify some of these testimonies this morning. So just, just so you know that God is still in the business of turning situations around. And as you hear a testimony this morning that speaks to an area of need in your life, I want you to know that it's okay. It's okay to say, God, you did it for them. You will do it for me. You did it for that person. So I know you can do it for me. It's very okay. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's okay to take it as a prophecy for yourself as well. An indication that God is said to do something amazing in your life. Amen and amen. Testimony. Someone is thanking God for his goodness, his favor, and the mercy that she enjoyed yesterday. And we thank God with you. Hallelujah. Someone says, a court date is tomorrow to get bail for my brothers. Lord, favor us and let the bail be granted so that they can come home in the name of Jesus. That's a prayer point. And we will pray. We will pray and agree with you in a moment. Hallelujah. So let's look for a few testimonies. Um, someone says, a sum of money that I thought was impossible to raise for a particular project. God provided it within the required timeline. Praise God. We thank God for that amazing testimony. Hallelujah. I, so, okay, this is another testimony. I was the worst person to ever be around until God came into my life and changed me. He cured me and even exposed the weapon of the enemies that I see and hear. I used to see and hear things that others cannot. He says, I died a few times and he came to me and he said, it wasn't my time. God gave me supernatural power. We thank God for your testimony. We thank God for your testimony. We're excited about what God is doing in your life. And we pray concerning you that your testimony will stand sure. Your testimony will stand strong. He will preserve your testimony even until the end in Jesus mighty name. Someone says, we want to thank God for sorting out the bills we've been trusting him for. Today is so joyful for my husband and I, and we celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. Amazing. Someone says, praise God from Dallas, Texas. Praise God. We're happy to have you here. And we're excited that you could join us this morning. Hallelujah. Amazing testimonies of God's goodness and God's faithfulness. This morning, we're so thankful to God for all he does. Someone says, yesterday I sent a prayer request for God to help me as I embark on the concrete casting of the projects I'm working on and just to make everything go well. I'm here to return the praise and thanks to God. Faithful is he who has begun this good work and he will bring it to full completion to the glory of God. Hallelujah. We praise God with you. We praise God with you. Someone is thanking God for provision. He gave me more than enough this year. Oh, we're so excited for what God has done in your life. Lord, we thank you for this amazing testimony of your faithfulness. I have another one. I've come to say thank you to the Lord. My daughter's outreach project, Hope Alive, was an outstanding success. She says, outstanding success. The outcome completely beat our minds. It beat our imagination, sorry. It was far beyond our expectations. It was obvious that God's hand was on it. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be used by you to be a shining light and to impact our world. We celebrate that amazing testimony we're so, so, so excited that God is demonstrating his faithfulness to you. Hallelujah. Someone says, it's been one year God spared my life from high blood pressure. I almost lost my life, but he is faithful and will forever. I will forever be grateful. We bless God for your life and for everyone who's trusting God for a health situation, whatever it may be. I want you to anchor your faith on God's word that says, he will bless your bread. He will bless your water and take sickness away from the midst of us. Hallelujah. Someone says, I return all the glory to God for how he is crowning my year with goodness. This month of December, it's been from one open door to another. Hallelujah. 
and it's already setting the tone for my 2023 and for my family. I'm so grateful to God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for these amazing testimonies. You know, just evident that you are in the neighborhood and just blessing your people, blessing your sons and your daughters. I'm so, so thankful to God that he is still touching, still healing, still delivering, still showing himself faithful and strong. Someone said, today marks three weeks since I'm, okay, someone says, today marks three weeks plus since I moved to Canada and I'm grateful to God because I have found favor. I've hardly spent my money since I came and I just secured my own accommodation after yesterday's prayer at Ignite. PG prayed for speed over all submitted applications and my residence was approved. Glory to God. We give glory to God on your behalf and we celebrate the God of great grace. Someone says, I want to thank God for great additions this year for me and my family, especially as we welcomed our baby girl. Hallelujah. It was through a CS, a cesarean section. And I remember the doctor saying my uterus wasn't contracting after my baby was brought out. And it was a lot of panic. However, God came through and the procedure was successful. I give God all the praise. Baby girl is doing great and the family at large. Hashtag contagious gratitude. Hallelujah. It is, it is, it is contagious gratitude. And we thank God for this amazing addition to your family. I'll take one more prayer, one more testimony. I know there's I know there are so many amazing testimonies and I thank you. I thank you for sharing your testimony boldly this morning. I'll share one more and then we will pray and agree with everyone who has a prayer point this morning. Yesterday, I sent a prayer request for God to help me. Oh, I already shared this one. It's about the concrete casting for someone's project. And we have thanked God for that amazing testimony. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So let's just take the time to just thank God and pray and agree with everyone who has dropped a prayer point this morning. Um, We read one prayer point earlier as I was sharing testimonies. And I want us to just begin to pray. If you have If you have the prayer language of the spirit, I'd like to just begin to speak in the spirit and just begin to pray for everyone this morning who is trusting God, trusting God in one area or the other. Some people have interviews today, whether for jobs, whether for visas, whether for approvals, for one thing or the other. Can we pray and agree concerning them that God's favor will go ahead of them, that in this season, God will cause his light to shine upon them in the name of Jesus. That this will be a season where God's goodness will magnify and amplify what they do in the name of Jesus. Let's pray and also agree for everyone who is trusting God for a health challenge. Someone this morning is trusting God for a health situation. Father, Heal my brother, heal my sister, heal me, touch me. Father, raise them up from that bed of affliction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask today, Father, that sickness, that the hold of sickness is bound concerning everyone who is gathered in this place, trusting you for a testimony concerning their health. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. We bind the power of of every sickness, every disease, and everything, oh God, that seeks to hold your people bound. And we declare a divine release. Let the healing power, oh God, let your healing power touch heal, save, deliver, revive in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning we declare for everyone who is trusting you for clarity in one area or the other. We declare in this season that your light shines upon that darkness in the name of Jesus. We speak a blessing for everyone who is um, thanking you for an anniversary today, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, job anniversaries. This morning, we thank you. We thank you for grace for completion. We thank you for the grace, oh God, that causes us to enjoy the latter seasons, oh God. The Bible says that your latter will be greater than your former. I speak it over everyone who has a birthday or any celebration in the coming days, that indeed that will be your testimony. Your latter will be greater 
than your former. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Father, we just speak your blessing upon every prayer point that has been dropped on this altar today. We ask by your spirit, oh God, you will give to someone a speedy resolution of that, of that request in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the amazing testimonies, oh God, that we've shared today. Even for the ones I didn't read out, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for the wonderful things you're doing in the midst of us. Father, cause your sons and daughters to always have a song to sing, to always have a testimony of your faithfulness. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. We thank you and we bless you today. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining Ignite this morning. I trust that you've been energized from within, that God has lit a fire within you that nothing will be able to quench in Jesus' mighty name. I pray you have a day of strength and power and that you will see the goodness of God show up for you on every side. Don't forget to join in. Switch tomorrow, switch tomorrow, hold at 6 30 p.m if you're around christus conference center please make sure that you navigate your way there otherwise join online and you will be richly blessed ignite continues tomorrow 6 a.m to 7 a.m so make sure you dial in join on youtube join on mixlr join on zoom and we will pray together and encourage each other in righteousness thank you thank you thank you let's close our meeting declaring psalm 1 verses 1 2 and 3 over ourselves Let's go. Blessed am I, for I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But my delight is in the word of the Lord, and in his word I meditate day and night. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in my season. My leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever I do prospers. I pray that you prosper mightily and that you will see the outstretched arm of God today in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you and have a fantastic day.